Ah, please. Rebecca, you're in mute. You're in mute. Okay, welcome to our 14th or 15th issue of the NAMAD or Art and Cultural Connection. Uh, we're very thankful to everybody for being here. I think there will be other people who already gave us a donation and are intending to, to come in, to step in. Um, from Shirley Shavit, who is the International Director of NAMAD Israel, the last, um, the last information we got is that with the money that we send, not only is it used to renovate daycare centers, in fact, they renovated a, a, their daycare center in Holon in the name of Raquel Rup Zihronal Ibrahim, and all that renovation was finished, and uh, they are very happy with the capacity that they have to receive other children. Uh, but this week, um, uh, Shirley Shavit tells us that they are privileged to introduce two PhD recipients in gender studies. In, uh, some of the money that goes to NAMAT is given, uh, is used to give the opportunity to, uh, for students who cannot afford to go to higher, higher education, and they get they, they get the money for their PhD. They have had people in science, in medicine, and this month, they two recipients got uh, money for their PhD in gender studies. One is Shiri Oron, who's doing a study, a research grant for outstanding women in academia. And the other one is... Um, Iris Librovsky, a PhD student in education at the Tel Aviv University and a recipient of this year's NAMAD research grant for outstanding women in academia. And her study is based in a def definition of self-efficacy uh, in the workforce. Uh, it's geared to women, uh, middle-aged women that want to join the, the workforce and in that, Naamat is helping tremendously. Um, the situation, the economic situation in Israel requires that not only one person brings in Parnassa, but um, the two partners, uh, the husband and wife, need to work. And that's where Naamat, through the daycare centers, um, we attend to the children, and that, that's the biggest part, but now they are also gearing towards the uh, betterment of women in all areas of uh, knowledge. So um, this is uh, about the, the situation, and um, we have two new PhD candidates that uh, join the forces of NAMAT. Okay. Uh, we can't wait to be in person uh, joining the missions to Israel. They were planning originally to do the, um, the big 100th anniversary celebration in person in Israel, but I think um, they are reevaluating and maybe they will do it on Zoom, but we don't know for sure. We're looking forward to really be actually going to Israel and joining all the volunteers throughout the world. Okay, so Monica, thank you so much for being here. And this Zoom is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Rebecca, for the opportunity. And of course, to Annabelle, Diane, Matilde, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And to my special friend, childhood friend, Marta Franco, who introduced me to Naamat and assist me with the beautiful invitation. Uh, I really admire the work you do. And I hope uh, we are after this meeting will be, I'll be part of your group as well. So without uh, too much ado, I'm going to share my screen. 
and start the presentation. Just, just Monica, one second. Uh, Rebecca, kindly send the invitation. Sarah is not connecting. Send it to Matilde and to Sarah, please. Get in touch with Matilde and uh, Sarah needs the invitation, please. She needs the link. Thank you, Monica. Sorry for the interruption. And thank you. You, you can start. No problem. I was born in Peru. My parents were Polish who met in Israel. My mother was a nurse in Israel army and my father volunteered for three months as a mining engineer designing the Haganah tunnels during the British mandate. Wow. Later on, they immigrated to Peru and I immigrated to Canada in 76 and my parents in 1985. I live now in Vancouver, British Columbia. My studio is located amidst mountains, surrounded by a forest, and with a view of the Pacific Ocean, who inspires me on a daily basis. I also seek inspiration from other sources, such as Judaica, my travels, ethnic textiles, and archeological sites and history of ancient cultures like from my native Peru. No, it's a Monica. I have a small uh, video, short video about my inspiration and my technique that I want to share with you. I'm Monica Gibbards. I'm a Canadian mixed media artist. I work with oil and acrylics, and all my work is inspired by the Pacific Northwest Coast. The ocean is a vital component in nature and an international icon across cultures and countries. Today, with climate change and pollution, its ecological integrity and beauty is threatened. The beauty, force, and energy of water have always drawn me in. I'm fascinated with the way light reflects in the water, especially during sunset. My paintings do not intend to capture a single moment, but instead endeavor to create a space where nothing stands still. To emulate the play of light, I use metallic paints and inks and mixed media to echo the ripples and waves in the water. And in some cases, I use a little bit of sand. These paintings exude the natural soulful energy that oceans, rivers, and lakes have brought me in since birth. My process starts by finding something that moves me in nature that is rugged and imperfect, like rock outcrops, mineral patinas, or the reflection of light on water, inspirations that I want to convey on canvas in an abstract way, inviting the viewer to touch them. Texture and light are two key elements in my work, as I aim to blur the line between painting and sculpture, inviting touch. The texture layers are mainly created using a palette knife, laying them down thick and thin, scraping them, allowing some parts to come through. I also use multiple thin veils of layers of color, which are overlapped to create color fields and luminosity. It is the combination of the overlapping process that creates a highly textured and luminous final image. To achieve the patina look in my paintings, I use metallic paints and metallic foils to achieve more luminosity. I like to abstract reality, telling a story to elicit an intimate aesthetic and emotional response. To experience this, story, the viewer must see the multiple layers of my work and be seduced into a visual and tactile encounter, inspiring self-discovery, empathy, meditation and mindfulness. I'm on. Art is my second career. I have a bachelor in science and a master in landscape architecture and environmental planning. I have worked in both large scale commercial real estate, development and sales, eco and cultural 
cultural tourism planning and marketing, environmental assessment, and at the end in my career for the Canadian federal government dealing with Aboriginal issues in several sure. capacities, which included negotiating treaties with Aboriginal people. I retired in 2017, which gave me the opportunity to embark on a new career as a professional artist by showcasing in public and commercial galleries. While I was still working for the government, I started to do sculpture or jewelry under MG Designs and painting as a hobby. I attended part-time Emily Carr University of Art Design, where I received both a fine art certificate and an advanced painting certificate in 2014. This was my trademark jewelry, which is uh, inspired by the kelp, um, it, which is a large algae that grows in British Columbia using recycled rubber, recycled silver, fair trade beads and pearls. This is an example of one of the laureates. And this is the example of a bracelet and a short necklace. The bracelet is retail for 50 US and the necklace is 150. This is also from the kelp line. It's a ring and it earrings. The earrings retail for 75 and the rings for 40. And just a little segue, anybody that would like to buy some of the jewelry after, I will donate 40% to Naamat. As I mentioned earlier, I also use recycled silver from the x-ray and film industry. Here's an example how uh, the sand patterns in nature has uh, inspired me to on my jewelry. And here is the medallion with the sand patterns in it. My jewelry has been showcased at many fashion shows and fundraisers, fundraisers and is currently for sale at the Aldean Museum in Whistler and the Vancouver International Airport and at selected boutiques. I started painting abstract first, which is not common. Usually people do realistic work and plein air. And my first jewelry show was in 2012 where I started to use texture using man-made and natural materials such as sand, stones, crackle medium, and broken glass. I developed further my work. I did more exper experimentation using silver dust from our jewelry, ash, and placemats. And as the paintings start to sell, I realized that including texture and metals was my artistic voice. My first Judaica jury show was at the Jewish Community Center themed Women in Judaism with a painting that I call Rachel, one of the four spiritual matriarchs of the Old Testament. I created this piece to honor my mother as her name was also Rachel, also an artist who had similar abilities and qualities as Rachel the matriarch. Although she's no longer alive, she continues to guide me in my daily life and artistic journey. In terms of symbolism, the voice of Rachel is of deep thought, dreaming and hoping for the well being of all people in the world. The texture, patinas, and color palette of copper, earth tones, and turquoise are inspired by the simple but colorful clothes, jewelry, and headdresses that Rachel would have worn while working in the fields. My second Judaica jewelry show was also at the Jewish Community Center with a painting called Woven Talit. I created this mixed media painting in the memory of my father. Inspired by the traditional colors of white with black of a talit, Peruvian textiles, kipus, and woven friendship bracelets are depicted in the tzitzit. 
This painting incorporates upcycled textiles and it's an abstraction of the myriad patterns of lines, textures, and colors that occur when the warp and weft are woven together on the loom to create alluring textiles. Woven talit also symbolizes the tapestry that we call life, where individually we're nothing much more than a single thread intertwined with others, and also the woven aspect of the various cultures and religions that have come together to create modern Israel. What ties us to one another are the thread of hope, the yarn of differences, the string of togetherness, and the rope of strength. In 2015, during an art show, I met an interior designer from Singapore who requested a commission of nothing small. She wanted a five by seven feet painting. I never painted this big in my life. This painting became the turning point in my career from hobby to professional. This painting is now at the Gold Coast Noble Hotel in Guangdong, China. My work is unique in the way I combine texture and washes with metallic paints and foil to conjure up a sense of mystery and ethereal light. The transitional period of dusk to night when the sun's light is most effusive, but the reflections are intense, are the qualities of light that I am most interested in. This ethereal landscape painting is a transformative interpretation rather than a literal rendering with the intention of evoking an emotion being calm or energy, a feeling, a memory, a dream, allowing the viewer to finish the narrative. My goal is to have the painting emanate light rather than just be a surface that records the reflection of light. This is why I use metallic paints and foils to echo what I observe. The artistic process is for me one of constant discovery and conversation. The painting speaks to me, tells me what he needs and I respond. In this painting, I have used upcycle materials such as paper, textiles, and a little bit of foil. I use texture to blur the line between painting and sculpture, inviting the viewer to touch them and evoke an emotional response. To create them, I apply multiple layers of color gel mediums mixed with external elements, each partially re revealed to create a 3D effect. I also use multiple glazes of color to produce contrast and harmony, creating lightness, fluidity, and ephemeral atmospheric effects. In this painting called Cosmos, I use paper, straw, sand, and glass beads. I paint to create many layers. Some I scrape off, some I keep adding on. The idea is to provide an escape to a dreamlike place. I use an earthy, quiet palette, echoing the color found in metallic patinas, raku pottery, and ancient glass. To accomplish the above, I use intense turquoises, luminous steels and yellows, hunting blues, earthy ochres and siennas, deep burgundies and mysterious charcoals and blacks. I also use metallic paints and foils to accent the textures and to give the luminosity. This painting has over 30 layers of paint and the first two layers is an old map, cheesecloth and cardboard. Try to see if you could find it. Initially, I start painting using the brush. Then I transition to using mainly the palette knife and combining both acrylic and oil mixed with sand, resulting in my art becoming more unique and complex. I've been honored to have one of my paintings, Ebbing, featured on the label of a bottle of wine. This winery is run by a woman 
in Vancouver Island and is all organic. The same winery commissioned a painting, Ways of Tranquility, to be featured in their spa products, which are made of the leaves and the pits and skins left over after the grapes are crushed to do the wine. I use some of my designs to feature them in wearable art. I'm represented by Vita, a fair trade clothing designer company that empowers small businesses worldwide. And their website is, is in the top of the slide. Because of my science background, I also aim to communicate via art main issues pertaining to environment, such as climate change, plastic pollution on our carbon footprint, to invite dialogue and discussion. Last year, this painting, Exposed to, won third prize in a climate change theme show. There is beauty in repurposing materials because of their distinctive uniqueness and imperfect textures. Also, the fact that by using them conveys the message to the viewer about the importance of decreasing waste and minimizing our carbon footprint. Art can certainly open eyes to how much our lifestyles imperil the planet, and we could encourage all of us to make positive changes. Commercially, I'm represented in Canada by two galleries, Ukama in Vancouver and Tofino Contemporary Gallery in Tofino in Vancouver Island, and internationally, virtually, by Single Art and Saatchi. My paintings have been exhibited at numerous public commercial galleries in BC and the US and have received several awards. In addition, my artwork is found in corporate and private collections throughout Canada, the US, Europe, Mexico, Peru, Australia, New Zealand, China, Russia, Israel, and Japan. I was the winner of an annual banner competition in 2018 in my village, Lions Bay. And this year I was chosen among 100 artists to do art using plastic trash recovered by divers in nearby water bodies to be exhibited in 10 public galleries next year. Next year. I've been also chosen as an international eco-artist by visionary projects that are based in the US and in the United Kingdom. My art will be featured in an international documentary about artists' responses to the climate change emergency titled Turning the Canvas by Daniel Conrad, which also includes interviews with scientists, activists, and other artists. It will be distributed to film festivals, universities, and public television such as CBC and PBS in 2022. I wanna thank you, everybody that has attended this Zoom and to Naamat for this opportunity to showcase my art. You can find my artwork in my website uh, where I also have a virtual gallery. And you can of course follow me in Facebook and Instagram. Thank you again. And I'll Monica. be happy to share any questions. Monica, this has been a fantastic presentation. You've come such a long way from being a, a, a professional, uh, working uh, as, as a scientist and landscape architect and how you find found your voice in art uh, especially for a commission that is not uh, the norm uh, <laughs> and as you say you are out of the box because you mix media and that's also very unusual to me at least uh, combining oil and acrylics and uh, of course being an eco Artist is amazing because that's such an important thing that we all have to take care of our environment and using the things that you find in the ocean that the divers find is <laughs> also wonderful that you're so successful that your 
brand your design is on a wine bottle and on their if, if products, cosmetic products or whatever it is uh, that they're doing. I think that's terrific. And um, it's, it's how you marry art with everything else in the world, creating an awareness it, for all of us to live better, healthy and to protect our environment. So I think it's remarkable what you're doing, continued success to, to you. I am uh, proud to have been in contact to you and to meet you through Marta. Marta, thank you very much for uh, arranging this contact. It's been remarkable and we are open to all of you with your participation and thank you once again. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, pleasure. Marta, you want to add a few words? I saw her on the chat. She's in mute. You have to. Monica, <laughs> you're full of surprises. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Even now that the title of your presentation is about light, you have a beautiful light in your head, a beautiful aura that it's like part of your painting. I love that. Thank and you. Thank you. It's uh, it's amazing. I, I I love like Annabelle said how you combine your art, your science, your past, looking to the future. Everything is integrated, and I'm so proud of you. So so proud of you as a friend and as an colleague, art colleague, everything. Bra oh, Marta, bring me tears. Marta and I, we've been friends since we were, what, nine years old? Eight. Eight. <laughs> so, and it's through art that we completely reconnected. It was uh, very interesting. All these years, you know, we were friends and then suddenly we uh, we connected through, through art. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your beautiful words. Monica. I, I want to ah. Let me just add a little thing. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned the kelp, and the kelp is actually found in the Pacific. Yeah. Uh, so you go to San Diego, and there's kelp, and you go to South America, and there is kelp. is the most pristine kelp you can find. Oh, it really? Is. And kelp does contribute immensely to cleaning our planet. Corals and kelp uh, and, and ve vegetation, marine vegetation in general, do contribute. What I also like when I spoke that you do marry uh, art and everything else, I thought it was fascinating when you honored the Talit and the Kipu, Kipu coming from Peru, uh, from the Incas. So it's fascinating how you uh, combine these cultures and uh, you have the privilege to continue living in the Pacific Ocean because in Peru, we also grew up with the Pacific Ocean. So it's nice to have this Ledorvador, uh, this continuation with your honoring your parents and your Jewish background. And we want to see a little bit more maybe of your dad, the relationship with Israel. I think that was also very fascinating. So sorry, um, um, Rebecca, you, you wanted to say something. Monica, congratulations. Your work is really outstanding. Hi, Marta. Uh, <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, it's amazing. I was absolutely fascinated by the by the pearl necklace that has several. I I did. I was taking pictures of all your. Work. Do you have it? Can you put it again so I take a picture of that? I was fascinated by by, by that necklace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I have to share the screen again. And that one honors the kelp. Yes. This one? Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I have it. Let, me, first. let me move. Yeah, yeah, that one. Oh my goodness. That is really incredible. I, I took the picture. Thank you. It's all available for sale and she's going to. Is it, is it available for sale? Yeah, it's, uh, it's 150 and I'll donate 40% to Namat. Oh my goodness, I like it. <laughs> and I think I want it. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll connect. Okay, very good. Amazing, really, really amazing. Well, the reason it's, it's uh, because it's recycled rubber and the kelp has, you know, it's not a stat, it's not like coral that is sta static. It, it floats, it, it bends. And um, so uh, I chose that 
that material and it's recycled. And people ask me, was it recycled? I said, I don't know, it could be a tire, it could be fan belts. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was really um, a journey how I started with the rubber because I had applied to many shows with trade beads and complicated silver pieces and no, we don't want it, we don't want it. And for the fun of it, I started this line of rubber. I thought, okay, well, and they wanted a whole collection. So I went to this gallery and I said, okay, here it is. And she, the woman just loved it. And she said, well, you know, I'm, she took all my samples. I said, you can't have my samples. I need them to make more, right? So it was really funny. Uh, one of the lines that I, I made it initially as a joke. And, and, you know, all the beautiful silver with these trade beads and semi-precious stone. Oh, they, they didn't could care less. They wanted the rubber. So there we go. Wonderful. Uh, it, it's amazing. And now knowing you through your art are you, and your connections and the connection also, like with the with the Indians the of, of Peru and and the and I guess you you have con been connected also with China and with the Far East and Europe and everywhere that enriches you so so much and but I am fascinated by the by the necklace which I Bezrat Hashem want to wear it for. My, for my grandson's wedding next year. Wow. <laughs> what, what an honor. Because it's really superb. Thank you. I, I, really, really amazing. But the whole thing, your, your paintings, the, the degradation of the coloring, the combination of materials, it, it's really fascinating. Congratulations. Well, you are incredible. For, for me, thank you, uh, Rebecca, is... I was always a black sheep, Mark, that can attest to that. Um, when I went through school, whatnot, I, I realized, well, I just don't fit the mold and I just uh, did what I wanted to do. And, and it's, um, you mentioned Asia, like I've traveled quite a bit and I'm fascinated by the Japanese gold screens and how throughout history, oh, gold was used because there were very dim lights in the palaces and in the churches. So for me, it was that. And then I suddenly realized, wow, I had all this in Peru, right? So it brought me back to, to what I was exposed earlier on. So trying to find how this mishmash, I can make it into something interesting. Sometimes it's, it's a challenge because I have so much on my head, right? That I want to to put on. So um, slowly I'm finding, okay, I'll, I'll work on different lines of art, right? Some are a bit more uh, tamed and some are a bit more wild. But for me, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I retired in 2017 and I, I just found like I'm busier now than when I was working. Of course. And meeting new people and new experiences, right? So, Monica, uh, so my cousin Nelly is there, and I want her to say say a little bit. She went to school with your brother. Hi, room. Nelly. So you knew Sefi. Very much. We were very close friends. Wow. Very world. very much. Yeah. Well, sure. I always good. remember of him always thank you thank you thanks for sharing and congratulations and see, congratulations thank you nelly thank you i see judy who's judy i see a judy i don't know who judy is okay so maybe it was one of our classmates from from peru Oh, yes, I see Judy, but I don't see a last name. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Matilde, we cannot hear you. Oops. Ladies, we, you have to unmute yourselves. You have to unmute yourselves, please. Okay. 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 Now, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, Monica, congratulations. I am very happy to hear you. And really, we 
we love your work and we wish you you continue doing things so beautiful like you are doing. My name is Matilde Behar from Naamat. She's Thank the president. I also our, want our president. Thank you. You're doing a great job. I'm really Thank you. Thank really you. Amazed. We continue working with, with pleasure. I, I was working with Raquel for 45 years. Oh, wow. And, and we continue. And thank you for your support and the support for everybody who is today with us, always helping us. Thank you. Well, somebody, yes, Annabel, if I may. Please. Monica, I congratulate you. You really impressed me. I didn't expect to see what I've been seeing today. Besides that, I also love the same necklace that Rebecca likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Besides of that, I have to congratulate. I mean, your paintings are very special. They, the colors that they infuse calm serenity that's what i feel when i look at your paintings they are very very special may hashem bless you to keep on going and do so mar such a marvelous work thank you um you know you see the background this is a lot yes. of inspiration it's very pacific right yes the funny thing i'm going to share with you ladies and martha can attest to that i'm not a calm person <laughs> I'm a very go, go, always on the move, very uh, stirring trouble. But um, I find what I want to communicate is, is calm. And, and, and the that's what ocean gives me that calm, that centeredness. Mm -hmm. And I found, especially during COVID, that people were really wanted to find something to center, of course, family is important and whatnot but because we were so isolated and so i i really thought okay i feel that way i want to share that way so i'm glad that that's you did you did thank you thank you